Okay. Sleep aid. Okay. Um, sleeping on the road can be challenging. Um, and actually, has anybody tried the Kirkland Signature Sleep Aid? <laughs> I'm, I'm not here to push drugs, but um, I discovered this. Actually, my husband discovered this, and it is amazing, but I only take about a third of a pill, and that's enough to help me to fall asleep when I'm traveling. I don't take it very often at home, but I find that if I take this the first night of my travel, it makes a huge difference for me for the next few days of my business travels. So I think that's a good product. I always just carry a couple with me, but I think there's also a ton of different herbal supplements out there that you can try that can be helpful. This is one that I really like. Um, it's called Seda Plus, um, S-E-D-A-P-L-U-S. It's by a company called Thorn Pharmaceuticals. Um, you can only get this through nutritionists and physicians and naturopaths, um, but what it's got in it is valerian root. Has anybody heard of valerian root? Chamomile, um, there's just a lot of things that you would get in those teas that you can drink the tea at night. Um, but my problem is I drink the tea at night, it puts me to sleep, but then I have to get up to go to the bathroom. Okay, so I don't do the teas at night, I'd rather just take something and that's gonna help me to you know, calm down, fall asleep, and you know, get, get hopefully that six and, a, six and a half hours. So Whole Foods is a good place to go. Um, your local health food store, they're gonna have some sort of a combination of items. I don't usually just buy melatonin. Anybody in here a melatonin fan? Um, it doesn't work for everybody. It's a naturally occurring, occurring hormone in your body. So it's a good thing to have it, and we don't make as much melatonin as we get older, which is why you know our teenagers can sleep for 12 hours and we have a hard time sleeping for five. We don't make as much melatonin anymore. But I find that the formulas that are sold in most markets, the melatonin, the milligrams, it's so high that it kind of knocks you out and then you end up having these really crazy dreams. Has anybody ever had that before? Where you just, you're kind of tossing and turning, you have that too, where you're just tossing and turning and the whole point is that you're trying to sleep better and I wake up and I feel like I've you know, been running through a maze. So I don't recommend the melatonin unless it's mixed with some other herbs and that's why I like you know, going to my, <clears throat> excuse me, going to a health food store, getting a combination of things like the valerian root and the chamomile and with a little bit of melatonin mixed in. Okay, doing okay on questions? Okay. Hand sanitizer. Uh, I always travel with it, but I hate the sprays because I have to put it in my makeup bag and then take it through security. So I want something that I can just stick in my bag. I get these at Target. It's called Cleanwell, the company. Um, but you can get these anywhere. Um, Whole Foods has them, different brands. Um, these don't have alcohol. It's actually, I think, oregano is what cleans your hands. But when I get to my hotel room, I, okay, I'm a little compulsive, but I do wipe down the doorknobs and the TV clicker. It's the highest level of bacteria in the entire room is on the, the doorknobs and the TV clicker and the alarm clock. So not to sound too weird, it drives my husband crazy, but when I get to the hotel room, the first thing I do is I get my suitcase, I open up my hand sanitizer, I clean everything, and then I can relax. So if you're not like me, that is such a good thing. I just had way too many bacteriology classes in college, you know, so now I know I can look and see germs everywhere. So again, I travel with these. These again are great for the airplane when you're sitting down and you got that dreaded middle seat and you wanna eat your meal and you just don't feel like getting up. So I always try to carry these with me and it just makes my travel a little easier. So those are my 10 items that I always carry with me in my suitcase. Any questions? Okay, let's move on then. So the three things you have to do when you get home, um, and I, I really try to stick with this on most days, even if I come home and I'm not feeling well or I'm in you know, a different time zone, exercise within 24 hours. If I don't exercise within 24 hours, it'll be five days, and then five days will turn into six days. So if I, if I get in at 10 o'clock at night, I still set my alarm to get up in the morning and exercise. It may not be much. It may be a 20 minute walk with my dog or maybe stretching in front of the TV or something like that. But you've gotta do something to get your body moving. When you travel, 
you'll retain a lot of water. I think most of us realize that. Just, just air travel in general, the extra sodium we're eating, um, the changes in the, the altitude, we're gonna retain a lot more water. And when you have a lot of carbohydrates, again, you're on the road, you have a bagel or you have a sandwich, for every one gram of carbohydrate you eat, your body is gonna drag in two grams of water and keep that in your body for a little while. So if you have a little bit of carbohydrate, you just feel bloated. So when I come home, I try to exercise within 24 hours. Again, it doesn't have to be much, but you wanna do something to try to get your body moving. Eat a high fiber meal within six hours. I probably don't need to go into a lot of details on to, as to why about this. <laughs> uh, but if you're having your flax seeds, you're probably good. But it's really important to keep things moving. And having a high fiber meal is gonna be really helpful. By high fiber meal, I don't mean just a green salad. A green salad is not your best way of getting a high fiber meal into you. If I'm gonna make a green salad, it's gonna have at least five different vegetables, and I need to have at least two cruciferous vegetables, which is gonna be like the broccoli, bok choy, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, something like that in the salad. Those are your big cancer fighters. Those are the, the, the vegetables that really kind of sweep everything out of your body. You really wanna get those cruciferous vegetables in. And then beans and lentils. That's another great way to get more fiber into your body. B vitamins are really important for stress management, and beans and lentils are extremely high in B vitamins. So just open a can of black beans, um, pinto beans, rinse them off. I put them in a strainer, put warm water over it, rinse, the, rinse hopefully a lot of the sodium off, put it on top of my salad. It's a great, really easy, fast, high fiber meal. Water with citrus. I learned this trick from a girlfriend of mine who's a former model, and she said this was like the supermodel trick that, that you know, nobody really talked about. So the night before a shoot, they drink a ton of water with squeezing oranges, limes, lemons, whatever into it. Citrus is a natural diuretic. So if you have, even on the road, you have iced tea, squeeze the lemon into it. You get club soda, squeeze the lemon into it. It's gonna help your body to push out that excess water that your body just doesn't need. Okay, so a lot of water. Uh, it's easy to get dehydrated on the road. And I get this question quite often, you know, how much water should I be drinking? And you know, somebody said one time in a talk, you know, I heard that you take your body weight and then you divide it into kilograms and then you take these ounces. And I thought, oh my gosh, it's all this math. So instead of doing the math, just look in the toilet. Okay, if your pee is this color, you're dehydrated. Okay, newsflash, you're dehydrated. So when you urinate, when you look in the toilet, the water should be almost clear and then you know you're at a good level of hydration, okay? The other thing that's gonna make your urine really dark uh, is taking a handful of vitamins, so just be careful. You know, it's not because of that. 